In this video, we're going to learn how to make this hero section for a website. So we're working on the navigation bar and the hero section itself. And if you're new to Frema, this is perfect for you because we're working through it step by step. So let's get into the video. So I've just created a new um, Frema file here and I have my logo and the colors we are going to be using for this tutorial. So the first things first is to save your colors as styles for consistency. So I'll just select this blue here and I'll under styles view, I'll come and click on this plus sign and you can just give your color a name, dark blue and click on create and you can see it has saved as a style. So let's just do that for each of the other colors we have here. Call this light blue. Um, black. And we have white. We have all our colors saved as styles. Next, we want to make our logo a component because components allow us to use certain elements across a website. So you just select the logo, right click and click on create components. So we'll call this logo, create. Now Frima will bring you into this component section, but we can just leave that for now. So I'm going to drag in the portfolio logo into the board. And we'll just create these navigation links on the right side. So you can type in uh, maybe my work. So we have that, let's zoom in. So let's just set the style for the font. So we can use uh, General Sans. General Sans. And we can set the size of 16. And probably just align it to the left. Right, so we can set the weight to semi-bold. It stands out. And I can just give you a color style of the dark blue. Right. So since we've set this text, we can now save it as a style in our website. So we can use it across board. So I just call it paragraph. But I'll actually like to edit the name to call it navigation. Right. So anytime I want to create a navigation link, we'll just come to textiles. So I can select this now. I'll press Ctrl D or Command D for Mac users to duplicate. And I have this, I can call this um, testimonials. We have that. I also press Command D again. And I can call this about me. Right? So we have our three links here and we'll just create a simple button that will represent the standard buttons on the website. So we can drag this and call it um, maybe contact me, right? For when you want to get a client. So I'll just draw a frame over this. So I'll come here where you can click on F and just draw a simple box over it, right? So you can see, but we need to kind of stylize the button so it looks better. So first things first, we'll click on layouts here on the plus button. A layout just gives us more control over what is inside it. So we can click on this. You can see how the text just goes into the center. But let's give our layouts button a color from our styles. So we'll just use that blue. Then the text we can change the color style of the text to white so that it stands out. Let's make our button rounded so we can select it under radius and give it a radius of 40. I see our navigation bar is taking shape already. So now we are going to put everything in a frame. So let's just select each of our elements we'll do that we'll right click and we'll click on add frame 
So everything is inside one frame as you can even see from the layers panel. But now we are going to turn on layout so that everything sits inside one layout. And you can see it looks kind of scattered but don't worry we will sort that out. So on that layout we need to work on the distribution of the elements. So everything now is set to the center which is why it looks this way. But we can set it to space between. So each of the elements have an equal spacing now. Right, but we want a navigation bar that has, if you come to our reference here, we want a navigation bar that has the links to the right and the logo to the left. So let's work on that. So we can select each of these uh, components that to sit on the right. We'll right click and add a frame for them. Right, so there's a frame within the entire larger frame. So this inner frame, we can just name it links so that we can be consistent. Links. Then we'll click on the layout button to have control over the links frame. So we'll change the distribution again to can change it to start. Right, but you can see the frame still looks kind of too long. Right, there's some extra space in here. So we'll just work on that by changing the width it's set to fixed so we need to change it to fit content i can see how that snaps to exactly the size of the content we can increase the gap between the elements by changing it to maybe 24. i can see our navigation bar looks really better now but we want it to cover the full width of the page right now, for you to do that, you need to make your desktop ads board a stack, right? And to do that, just click on layout, plus button. I can see it's a stack, right? So this our navigation bar within. Sorry, let's name it navigation bar. Navigation bar. We're going to change the width from fixed to fill. So it's going to fill the entire size of the desktop of the desktop ad board, which is why we have this now, right? And we can set the height to say hundred. Okay, but then again, it's too, it's too close to the edge. We want to create kind of a margin, right? So we can select our navigation bar, and we can add a padding to it. So to the left and the right side, we can add a padding of say sixty. 60 and 60. I see how that's taking shape. Let's add a background to the navigation bar. So from the field here, we'll set the field to light blue. And there we go. So let's make this navigation bar a component now so we can reuse it across different pages of the website. So I'll right click and click on create components. Navigation bar, click on create. And Framer is always bringing us here for us to make variations to our components, but we're not going to do that now. And that's how you build a navigation bar in Framer. All right, so we have a navigation bar and we can test to see how it works. You shrink it down, you see it responds properly. But if I shrink it to a smaller version, you can see that doesn't work well because we haven't built the tablet and mobile versions yet, but we'll get to that later. So let's build the section here now. So I'll just press F and draw a frame. But we are going to change the fill to our light blue so it matches our navigation. And we'll change the width from fixed to fill. And we'll set the height of 600 pixels. I can see there's a gap here between navigation and this section. So we'll come to our desktop page and change the gap to zero all right now we'll move to adding the text so i'll just come to my text here and draw a box and i have some text in my clipboard which i'll paste and we probably can't see that because it's blurred out because it's dark so we we'll change the color to dark blue so we have that but 
I can expand the size of my box. I'll set the height to fit content. Let's save this text as a star. So we'll set the size to 60 and we change the font type to the font width bold. Drag this a little on. and we'll just come here under style, click on new style. And we can call this heading one. Actually, this is more with display font, so I'll change it. I'll change, I'll rename it to display. All right, so we have that. We can actually duplicate this by pressing Ctrl V, dragging it down. And I just put the other text I have in my clipboard. And that looks so off. So we'll change, we'll take out this style. I'll just change the size to 16 and change the font weight to regular. We can increase the line height to maybe 1.5 so there's a bit more space. And that's looking better. So we'll just drag it in place. And now we need a button here, right? So we need to come back to this navigation bar and actually save this button as a component so we can reuse it again and again. So I'll select this from and I'll right click, I'll click on create components. We'll call it button, right? So this is now the standard button which we can also create variations for on our website. So under here, I'll come to assets and I'll just drag in my button and there we have it. So we can put all this in a frame, select this, right click and click on add frame. So we have a frame over it and we can click on this plus button to make it a layout so we can have control over it. Well, let's work on the distribution. We can set it to start and align things to the left, right? We can also increase the gap between things to maybe 16 right and you can see the frame looks kind of long at the bottom so let's change the height to fit content and also the width as well right so things are taking shape now if we go back to our template there's an image on the right side so we're going to work on that for the image within this frame if you see on that layers panel Within this frame, we'll just draw a box for our image. So we'll click on it. Under Fill, we'll come to the image here and we can click on Unsplash. So we'll just search for Designer and we can use any image. Let's use this one. Nice. And our website is beginning to take shape. So let's style this image now. So we can set a radius of 40, 40 to it, or maybe 40, maybe, mm, maybe 32. And we can equally add a border to it. So let's add a white border. So we'll come to our styles and click on white. And we can make the width maybe 12. Probably it's 12 looks too much. And let's add a shadow. Let's add a simple shadow. So we'll just click on realistic. And we can reduce the alpha on the shadow to say 15%. Right. So that's taking shape. All right. So our hero section is taking shape, but we need to make sure it's going to be responsive across board. Right. So on this hero and frame, we're going to click on the layout icon. Right, and it's a good practice to work with paddings. So I'm going to set the distribution to space between. So we can now add the padding that we need. And we're going to use a padding of 60 on the left and the right side. So I'll just add 60 here and 60. You can see how our page is going to be more effective. So let's click on this plus icon. 
I can see how everything shrinks in properly. Now it, it might not work fully for tablet and mobile because we're only building for desktop for now, right? And just to cap it off, let's make the bottom section rounded so that it looks kind of more um, modern and like this page is flowing into the next. So when you select this hero section here, under the radius, we're going to add a radius of 40 to the bottom left and the bottom right. So, so that's going to be 60 here and 60 here as well. I can see it has that kind of flowing effect. So let's preview what we have. And we have a standard hero section navigation bar, which is responsive for desktop. Alright guys, that's the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And like I said, this is part of our Prima series. So make sure you follow up for upcoming videos. I'm going to add a link to this so you guys can remix it and also test it for yourself. And if you want to learn more about Prima, just watch the video on screen. Bye-bye.